My name is Cory. I am from Anime Twist. Uh, pretty much we do things like interviews with voice actors, uh, we report on the anime that's coming out, um, as well as manga. We post a lot of cosplay pictures and just support the whole entire anime manga community. So that is what Anime Twist is all about. And if you would, sir, would you please introduce yourself? You can't tell me what to do. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone, or anyone who's listening. Um, my name is Micah Solusad. Uh, I'm a voice actor here in a uh, wonderful Texas town. Uh, you may know me from my role as a uh, soul and soul eater. Uh, I also voice Toma in a certain magical index, Guy in Guilty Crown, um, Mizuki in Kamisama Kiss, uh, Midnight in Fairy Tale. I am the current voice of Kobe in One Piece, um, older Ame in Wolf Children, uh, and uh, I guess B in Space Dandy is the most recent thing. Oh, no, 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 and uh, Free. Uh, what's his name? Minami in Free. There you go. Just that's a thing. All right. So pretty much these two, these two questions that come out, um, they're pretty much the most basic questions that you, you get normally in a lot of um, anime voice acting panels. But um, okay. one is, how did you get into voice acting? How did I get into voice acting? Mm -hmm. hmm. like, uh, like the industry or just in general? Just in general. In general? Um, I had heard about voice acting when I took my first acting class. Mm -hmm. It was sort of an acting 101 thing, and uh, they were teaching us mostly about stage and musical theater. But uh, we had a brief, brief study on, on voiceover, and uh, that seemed really intriguing to me. Um, it's sort of when I made the connection that people who do cartoons, I mean, or the voices behind cartoons, are, are real people. Um, and then uh, later on, in high school, uh, a couple of my friends actually ended up doing like independent voice acting for like voice one, two, three, uh, commercials and video games, indie work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of led into my interest and my uh, pursuit into voice acting. Right. Awesome. Um, so back to number the, the second question, which was, uh, what's some advice you can give to our listeners that are interested in becoming voice actors? Yes. Uh, what did I say already? I... You said that we've heard that uh, getting into acting. Oh, yeah, getting acting experience and, and, uh, um, and making connections and all that. You've heard before, but personally, I think a lot of, a lot of, fans who want to become voice actors get into the industry for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the wrong reasons, but just it's not, a, it's not a clear goal, you know, because they want to, a lot of times fans want to get in because for, for a number of reasons, maybe if they want to, they want more popularity or they want to hang out with other voice actors or they want to voice their favorite characters. And this is a job. Right. You know, and so it, it's almost like if I wanted to, become a football player so I could hang out with other football players. It, it's not really the right reason to go into it. You have to love acting. You have to love, you know, this doing acting as, as your job. Um, and then also, you know, once you get in, uh, the, don't be afraid to, to fail mm -hmm. because that's just part of the job. It's nothing, it's nothing personal. You know, you could have 20 people auditioning for the same part. The director can only pick one. And so it's not, it's not, unless you're just an awful human being, it's nothing personal, you know? <laughs> it's just how it works. Right. And uh, keep yourself grounded. A lot of people put their uh, identities upon their career or their, their hypothetical, career, hypothetical career, as it were. Um, and if that doesn't pan out or if that gets taken away, they have nothing to fall back on. So, yeah, keep yourself grounded in, in other things. That's actually some pretty good advice. Um, and I, know, so I said it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Southman says that he is actually taking voice acting classes to become a voice actor. Good, good. As you should. You should take uh, get as much acting experience as any actor will tell you. You know, the only way you can get better is through practice. 
And I know a lot of people, uh, an engineer at Funimation always says when uh, he runs into those cases of fans who don't act or don't want to act, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's like wanting to join a sports team but having no interest in sports. Right. You know, you have to have that passion, you have to have that interest and be good. You know, you have to know that you, you are capable of doing the job that is presented to you. Right. And I guess take it take it seriously. A lot of fans come in and think this is sort of like a, a hangout, fun, jokey job, which it is once you have it. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's a place of work. We have deadlines and you have to be professional. So, yeah, it, it's interesting, the, the mindset of, of some people when they come into audition. But that's my advice. And it's great advice, you know. Um, so... Other than the projects that you have worked on, yes, are you an anime fan yourself? If so, which ones appeal to you the most? Ooh, um, I I do consider myself an anime fan. I mean, uh, I I have a passion for uh, the genre, the animation. I mean, I, I like to do artwork myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, definitely consider myself an anime fan. I'm not as like well versed in like shows like right. i don't watch as much as i i used to right these days. um and i always fall behind but yeah i i consider myself an anime fan um my favorite types of shows i don't really have like favorite genres as long as it as it's well written i am quite happy with the results like i i dig Oran high school right shonen shows like around kenshin um, darker shows like uh, well, darker than black, or uh, or stupid shows like Space Dad. You know, uh, as long as they're well written and enjoyable, entertaining, I, I dig it. Okay, so can you tell us any humorous incidences that occurred while in the booth or in the course of your career that you would like to share with us? In the course of my career. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I just I always find that funny because it's like yeah, I'm still fairly new to it, all things considered. Um, yeah, uh, uh, while recording for Space Dandy, uh, they held okay. So the 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 last episode, we received like the scripts and the sort of uh, test animation for that mm -hmm. about two months before we actually started working on it, mm -hmm. and they would not tell me like. Have you seen Space Dandy? Yes, I have. Okay. Re re religiously. <laughs> so you know, you know what happens in the finale, right? With, with yep. the, Dr. Yep. Jeff and B. Mm -hmm. okay. So they kept that secret away from me for like two months. From the time that they got the test animation till we recorded, they wouldn't tell me what happened. I wasn't allowed to look at the script. I wasn't allowed to, to ask anyone like what happened or anything. It was mm -hmm. just a, a, an evil secret that they held from me. Um, and... Uh, so when it came to finally recording that, uh, they decided to film my reaction. <laughs> so they said, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna preview this uh, from the beginning of the scene to the end of it, and just so you can get a feel for what's happening." I'm like, "Okay, sure." So I'm watching it, and as it's unfolding, my I'm, my, I'm just freaking out. My eyes are glued to the screen, and once the scene's done, I look over towards the glass where the director is, and he's not he's not sitting at his desk. He's sitting. Or he's standing right up against the glass with his phone filming me. <laughs> like, really? So apparently that's going to end up on the, uh, the DVD extras on Space Dandy. <laughs> You're welcome. I am totally going to want to get that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing they asked, like, we were doing a bunch of special features for it, and they, they were like, all right, sign this contract and whatnot. And by the way, can we use that video that everyone's talking about? I'm like, well, what video? You know, the one of you reacting Space Dandy, uh, the finale. I'm like, oh, you sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing really that impressive, but I think a lot of people got a kick out of it. Well, while we're on the topic of Space Dandy, um, what was the challenge in work on working in... Blah, 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 blah. What was the uh, challenge uh, in working on Space Dandy since it was being dubbed in the States and at the same time it was being released in Japan? the challenges of working on Space Dandy, like the, the broadcast. Yeah. Like, like, uh, there were many. Uh, there, there were many. Uh, the first being that we constantly had to be, uh, we have our, like our schedules open in case mm. they called us in to work on, on the episode. 
it wasn't so bad on the first season, on the first half, because uh, most of those episodes were already done or being finished in Japan. So they'd send us whatever they finished, um, and then we had time before the broadcast date to to work on an episode, have kind of like build a queue, right? So we wouldn't fall behind. Um, but at, with, with the second season, uh, that was more of they were working on it as we were working on it. So we didn't know how it was going to end. We didn't know any of it until we got it like maybe a few weeks in advance, if that. Um, and with the second season, we recorded out of order a lot. I, I could have sworn halfway through the season we were done with Space Dandy. Mm -hmm. We really weren't. Like we, we ended up working on a, a much later episode. So watching it on Toonami was sort of like, oh, wait a second. This is the order of operations here. I had no idea. Right. Um, and since nobody knew if there was any continuity, there'd be times where we had to go back last minute, like maybe five days before the broadcast date to change something. Right. It's, it's revealed in the next episode, something else happens and we're like, okay, we need to change that or, or whatnot. So there, there were some challenges, but it wasn't, at least on the actors end, it wasn't as uh, stressful. I'm sure the directors and the script writers uh, were very stressed out <laughs> at the time, but I think we were okay. So you mentioned that you draw. Mm -hmm. um, when you're not voice acting or in the studio or at conventions, um, what are some hobbies that you partake in? Hobbies? Um, I occasionally like to play video games. Uh, I dabble in music as well. Uh, and I like to cook. You like and, to cook? Yeah, I'm a big fan of food. What, what do you cook? Um, different types of recipes. Uh, I experiment with like uh, different like ways of cooking meat, you know, like Western right. style or Eastern style. Um, trying new recipes out. I don't bake, though. Baking's hard. <laughs> uh, Southman316 wants to know, how excited were you to be the voice of Boris in Attack on Titan? Uh, <clears throat> Excited at all? I mean, I, I, I don't even know if Attack on Titan is a popular show or not. It is. That's not true at all. I, uh, I'm making that up. I, I was very, <laughs> I was very happy to be a part of Attack on Titan. Um, it, at least to some degree, because it's like we went through, they went through recording most of the show, and I thought, wow, I, I really hope I didn't screw up my audition that bad that I don't get a part. So when I got called in, I was like, oh, thank God, I'm at least worth, worth something. Um, so that was fun. And picking on Todd Habercorn is always a good time. <laughs> um, so what was your most challenging project? My most challenging project? Uh, I, I think I'll have to say Guilty Crown. Uh, playing Guy in Guilty Crown was, was really tough. Uh, it was an, a type of character that I played before. Mm -hmm. Uh, the severe badass who's in charge and calling the shots. Uh, I, w I was certain that was my weakest audition uh, when I recorded or when I did the audition for it, but apparently it was good enough to, to get cast. But I lost my voice quite a bit on that show. I didn't yeah. know uh, vocal restraint, <laughs> apparently. Um, and uh, how, was it work how was it like working with the cast in Guilty Ground? Uh, it was pretty fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the time, I was the first one to record, so I didn't really get to hear or know who was in the cast until much later. Uh, but I did find it hilarious that Austin Tyndall was playing Shu, because for some reason, he and I get cast as rivals a lot. And uh, I, I, I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah, very much. In A Certain Magical Index, he plays Accelerator, I play Toma, and we sort of have a, this rivalry. Um, and then in Guilty Crown, it's almost the opposite. It's the, our roles are flipped, where I'm like sort of the uh, antagonist, and he's, he's sort of flailing around, being like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm the hero. Um, and then we, <laughs> we just recorded for a show uh, recently, uh, and I think that's happening. Oh, can I talk about that? No, I, I can't. But I'm so hey, no specifics, but hey, we're, we're out of the game. 
And then I found out recently in Fairy Tale that uh, we had a fight scene, and mm -hmm. I owned him because that's how I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> um, but no, like uh, you, you. Okay, so Guilty Crown is officially over, right? With you guys. Yeah, it's been. So how did you take it when that twist happened? And you know, with the the twist with Guy and Chu and the uh, the chick that Inori is supposed to be based off. <laughs> the chick that Inori is supposed to be based off. Oh yeah, uh, like the season finale. Yeah. Uh, I was sad because I thought I wouldn't have work. <laughs> 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 Which was weird because then I suddenly did have work again, and I didn't understand why. Like, I thought the mid-season finale of Guilty Crown was really good. Mm -hmm. And that the second half was extremely confusing, probably because I showed up halfway through it. Um, and that the ending, the final ending, seemed very similar to the mid-season ending. Right. As far as my character was concerned. So, I don't know. Uh, the twist was cool, but I'm not really sure what happened, like, what it twisted into. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what you mean. Um, Southman wants to know, are, are you planning on attending any conventions in Florida, uh, like Omni Expo or MetroCon? Um, uh, I am not planning on any conventions in Florida. The thing is, uh, conventions contact us about uh, guest inqu inquiries, or, and uh, we don't get to choose, necessarily. Like, if I want to go to say, uh, you said Omnicon, um, they would have to contact me first. So as of right now, no plans for, for Florida. So what project or work have you done uh, that you are most proud of? And is there one that you are least proud of? Oh. Ooh, that's a tough question. The most proud of? Uh, I don't know. I sort of see all of my shows fairly equally. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the one I'm, I'm really, I'm very happy about is uh, Kami-sama Kiss, my role in Kami-sama Kiss. That character was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to season two, if we get it. I know! It's supposed to be coming in in, uh, I think, the winter or the spring. Winter season, yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. Like, every time uh, my friends mention Kamisama Kiss, I sort of have this smile, this goofy smile, and they're like, oh, Mike is happy about music again. Like, <laughs> oh, you're one of my favorites. Um, I guess I was really happy, I was really uh, happy with how um, Red Data Girl turned out. That's honestly one of my favorite, I guess, serious role that I've done. Um, and that was I'm, a very good series as well. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it was very confusing when I watched it, but working on it, it was a lot of fun. And I, uh, I'm kind of sad that not many people saw it. But I'm glad you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cody29 Natsu wants to know, what was it like working on a certain magical index? What was it like? Mm -hmm. That's a very vague question. Um, it was it was unexpected. That is the best word I can say. Um, we did the first season in like 2011, I want to say, um, and and then we did that and and Railgun, the first season of Railgun, and then nothing. We didn't hear anything about getting season two or any of the new like Railgun S or the movie, and so. Uh, come beginning of, or the end of 2013, we started working on Railgun S. And then beginning of this year, we did uh, Index Season 2 and then the movie. So it was, it was good to come back to the character again after taking that long break. Um, but it was really weird, too, because uh, we, we switched directors. Uh, Zach Bolton recorded the first season, and then Jerry Joel took over for the rest of uh, Railgun S season two in the movie. Um, so sort of getting to know each other and, and, and our working styles. Um, 
yeah, it was it was a very complicated sort of recording process, but I really enjoyed it, and I I think Tom is probably one of my favorite characters that I've voiced so far. I say that with every character. <laughs> I really like Toma though. I like I feel for him a lot of times when he's like, "It's not my fault." I'm like, "It's not, buddy. I understand." I don't know why am I talking to the TV. <laughs> um. So, are you working on any animated related projects now that you can tell us about? No. <laughs> well, you could talk about free. I can talk about free, but I can't talk much about free because I haven't done much in free. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that I voice Minami, and he he yells smartass comments at people. <laughs> um, yeah, and apparently, <laughs> apparently, fans ship my character and Cliff's character. So hooray! <laughs> um. Anime Dancer says it's breaking up again. I'm thinking that it's the live stream. Oh no. <clears throat> but, um. He survived? I think we're going to survive. Is it him or is it me? It's probably me. No, it's probably me. I'm the host. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. It's totally your fault. What are you doing? <laughs> You're the host. Um. And guys, just so you know, if you are tuning in or just not tuning in, um, oh, she says it goes, sometimes it goes completely black and silent. Oh, for both of us? Uh, I'm thinking it's the live stream. Okay. I, and by the way, if you want us to repeat answers or questions, if you didn't hear it, just let us know. Yeah, because, I mean, we, we're, this, this event is supposed to last, like, a certain amount of time. But we've, we've, you know, we've only done this for about 30 minutes. Like, just had this interview. It doesn't even feel like 30 minutes. Oh, good. That's, that's good. So, <laughs> um, are there, are, okay, so I know that you made an announcement that you are going to be at a convention. Are there any more that we, that you may know about that we may see you at the in the future? Um, I am currently in the process. It's hilarious to me how this happened. Magically, I ended up getting like five convention requests on the same day. Um, I don't know how that happened, but I'm currently working on those. I can't talk about most of them, but I will say that uh, I'll be in Alabama for Homicon in June. Um, and that's about it. Aside from MTAC, that is the only one I can talk about right now. You know, uh, hopefully I see you at many Acon again. Ah, I... I am not going to be at Mini Icon. <gasps> what? I have, uh, I'm possibly, I'm not announced for a convention, but, uh, yeah, that I accidentally double booked on Mini Icon because I was supposed to go. <laughs> Aww. But I, I had committed to the other one prior and I just forgot, so. Aww. Sorry. Uh, Southman316 wants to know if you could do a quick line from Soul Eater for him before he leaves in a couple minutes. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, any specific lines? And then we wait. <laughs> um, then a real quick question while we're waiting to see what he comes up with. Sure. Um, is there a quote that inspires you to get through the day? A quote that inspires me to get through the day. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure there, there's one that I, I, I often go to. Um, let me see if I can actually read it so I don't make things up and destroy the meaning of the quote. <laughs> and he says, uh, instead of you asking him, he's wanting you to do one of your favorites. He said those. Oh, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh man, I wish there there is one, and I I can't. Hold on. Um. You have to forgive me. It has been quite a while since we recorded Soul Leader. Um. But it was just recently that y'all did Soul Leader, not right. We have, I, I've not had any word on Soul Eater Not. Are you serious? Yeah, so, um, I know that Funimation just announced the home, the home license. Yeah. 
Um, but I, I have no word on that. And even if I did, I can't tell you. So <laughs> I, I Agreed. That's, that's what an NDA is for. Of course. Um, oh, what was it? There was a line from uh, the Corona episode where everyone, uh, not everyone, but like Maka and Sol are on the roof and she senses like there's some sort of disturbance in a building far away. And Sol says something along the lines of, you know, if it ends up being Black Star in the middle of a room, if it ends up being Black Star in the middle of a room saying, welcome to my big show, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I really like that one for some reason. Um, let's see, my favorite, or the quote that, that sort of gets me through the day. Um, Animadians are just did a fangirl squee. <laughs> Calm yourself. <laughs> It's only early afternoon. What are you getting so excited for? <laughs> um, and then on a, on a serious note, my, the quote that gets me through the day is, uh, sometimes when it feels like things are falling apart, they're actually falling into place. Aww. I really like that one. <clears throat> so. What is your? Mine is actually from Dolly Parton. Really? Um, and it's... Uh, Oh, God. You, now you're going to make me have to look it up. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's the I one... Yes. And people are going to look at me like... or Because they're actually seeing what I'm doing. Oh. Um, <laughs> oh, no, you're good. See, I cheated and I used my phone. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Hope everyone in the chat's having a good day. Uh, the way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put up with the rain. Ah, that's a good one. I dig that. So, <clears throat> that is from Dolly. Nice one, Dolly. Um, uh, Anime Dancer says she loves soul, and then aww. Good. And and then, I'm, I'm assuming that the awe is for your quote. Um, and then Southman316 says, what about the part Sol and Maka were arguing? Which part when Sol and Maka were arguing? They uh, argue all the time. About the fact that he thinks he mentioned something about fat ankles. Oh, that was a really funny part. Yeah, um... So I, I'm assuming you're, you're referring to the episode where uh, Sol and Maka are trying to get their emotions under check, like Stein's making them take special classes, and then they, they go up against Free, I think. I can't remember. Every time I say the word Free now, I just think of swimming. And that's, <laughs> that's right. and I'll say things like, oh, yeah, take this card. It's free. And people will look at me like, ooh, I love Free. I'm like, no, I meant you don't have to pay for it, but... If you think it is, go for it. Take it anyway. Um, yes, he said that one. That one that was that was a good episode. I wish I remembered more about what happened during the recording of it, but it was a lot of fun. That's all I remember. Especially because Travis Willingham uh was hilarious. I think that's probably one of my favorites uh my favorite lines in Soul Eaters when he's like bashing his head against the tray the tree and talking about how he's an idiot and all that stuff. Good times. So what? Okay. So I know that you worked in with Soul Leader with Chuck Huber. How was that? Um. Because I know that he's been a voice actor for um, older series. Yeah, yeah. I had heard Chuck Huber's work in like Yu Yu Hakusho and Dragon Ball Z and Full Metal Alchemist. So uh, knowing that he was in the cast, like we didn't really interact very much. Mm -hmm. to be honest. Even with, with Laura Bailey as Maka, I met her twice during the recording of that show. Um, one for a commentary, and the other was during a convention for the premiere, and that's it. That's all the interaction we've had. Um, and so with Chuck, we didn't meet at all during the working of Soul Eater. Um, so, but it was cool. I mean, when you look at the cast of Soul Eater, it's, it's got some pretty amazing names, you know? Uh, Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham, Monica Rial, Brittany Karbowski, uh, Chuck Huber. So it, it was definitely, a, for one of my first shows, a very humbling and uh, 
really neat experience. Okay, so this is another simple question, but it could be very hard. Um, where would you like to most live? Like, if you could choose anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? If I could choose anywhere in the world to live. That's a tough one. There's so many places. Where would you choose while I'm thinking? Um, to be honest, it's, for me, it's split between three. Um, I would want to go to Ireland, Greenland, or live in Japan. Wow. Why, why, why Ireland? Why would you do Ireland? I, I would do Ireland just because if you're tall enough to see over the bar, you can drink. <laughs> Point taken. Okay. <laughs> I see that. And then okay. Green and then Greenland, um, you know, it's it's so pretty the pictures that you see from there. Of course. And then of course Japan because of the heritage and Why not? the history. Oh, yeah. Um you know what, I'll pick three too. Um or also. Uh I'd say Washington, because it's just gorgeous over there. Uh, mm -hmm. very temperate. You know, during the summer here in Texas everyone's like Man, it's 100 plus degrees. It's so hot there. They're like, man, it's 80 degrees, and I'm sweating. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, ideally, I'd love to move back to Hawaii uh, because it's it's just one of the most amazing places to live. Uh, very laid back, although not much uh, voice work there, so that might be a problem. Um, and of course, Japan. Uh, I visited briefly last year and. There's something really cool about getting in touch with your heritage. You know, my family is, is uh, on my mom's side, is Japanese, and so uh, being able to, to feel that, like, wow, closer to, to my roots was, was a really neat experience for me. So, um, I don't know if this would apply to you, because I'm, I'm using questions that I've used from different uh, interviews. But um, have you ever done any, like, for example, say a video game company came to you with the Soul Eater game or something along the lines. Have you ever done any work with video games before? Um, just video games in general or video games related to the shows that I'm in? Or whatever, in general. Yeah, I've done, I've done a bit of video games, actually. Okay, um, so then this question would go as along the lines of, what's the difference between working on an anime and working on video games? Okay, uh, the difference is that we don't have video to react to. Um, we don't have, I mean, in some cases, depending on, on what project it is, we'll have like maybe Japanese audio, mm -hmm. and we'll have to match timing. But there's, there's no, at least when I worked on it, there was no video. Uh, for the most part, it's sort of, it's just looking at a script and then acting. You know, and they take your reads. Like I did, I did some work on Borderlands Two and Borderlands the pre sequel. Um, I also ended up doing a, playing the main character in the uh, what is it called the Centipede, mm -hmm. Atari Centipede game for the Wii. Um, and so that was just me acting with uh, another actress, and uh, we we play off of each other. Um, very different. It, it's it's uh, you know, in in dubbing, you're by yourself. You're isolated. And you do line by line, and you have to sort of understand the context of what's going on um, based on what the director's telling you and what the visuals show you. Uh, but in, in video games with prelay, you know, you're able to act out each scene with other actors and, and sort of get a feeling of build the character yourself instead of relying on a Japanese counterpart and stuff like that. So, yeah, there are many differences, and I, I like both in that regard because they, they have their own challenges, unique challenges. Right. Uh, Southman316 wants to know, how is the charity water thing coming along that y'all started? Ah, the charity water thing, um, we, we, we set up this, this uh, petition for clean water mm -hmm. that could, could uh, donate to, um, based on some drama that was happening on Kickstarter, you know, that kind of nonsense where it's like someone decided to uh, kickstart a shoe and it got like thousands of dollars for some reason um, so we decided to do something for a, a better cause um, it, it's right now we're working on the rewards I, I unfortunately have to draw the uh, some of the postcards that are being sent out and uh, I haven't had 
much time to do it. I'm planning to do it within the next month. Um, and we should be sending out the ones that we already have signed um, very soon. I had a problem getting into the site. Oh, did you? Um, and I was wanting to donate, too. Like, that that's not even no joke. But, like, every time that I would go on my computer to the site, um, my computer would blue screen and restart. Yeah, we had some issues. A couple of people emailed us about uh, not being able to access the site or uh, things would happen and they couldn't donate. So, um, while well, that is unfortunate, uh, thankfully there are other ways to donate regardless. So, right. Thanks to uh, charities uh, that, that you know of. So, yeah. No worries on that end. <clears throat> so, do you do anything special to keep your voice in shape? Anything special? Uh, no, I'm actually fairly bad at taking care of my voice. Uh, in fact, when <laughs> there was a time that I was on vocal rest because I was losing my voice, and the day that my voice got back, I just started shouting because I was so excited that I could talk again. Uh, and then I lost my voice again. So, uh, but I try not to. Uh, I, I drink a lot of tea, and I, I, uh, I eat honey because uh, that's good for your throat. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could go for some honey right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this, this weather in Texas where it's been going like up and down has been destroying my body. My body's like, like oh, look, you're getting, you're getting a cold. I'm like, I'm not getting a cold. It's just cold. It's like, you're sick. You're going to die. I'm like, oh, I've got work to do. You shouldn't do that. I'm dead. Thank you very much. Well, like, okay, so you know at A&T, uh, you left. And I, I said, hey, we should have an interview. And you're like, yeah. Um, that night, it snowed. Yeah, there was sleet. We were driving back, and it's like, oh, we're going to die. Because <laughs> Texans don't know how to drive through snow. <laughs> and, like, uh, all the volunteers and the staff are like, yeah, I think we should, we, we would suggest if you stay until Monday, because we don't right. want you to die. <laughs> yeah, poor, poor Loraldo. He drove up from Houston. And I think he was supposed to drive down that night, so hopefully he got home safe. But, uh, hopefully. But yeah. Messed up. So, um, when you're performing a character, is it important for you to do it in a way that it feels most right to you? Or do you think that it's more important to echo your Japanese counterpart and, you know, the Japanese counterpart's performance? So, do I, do I prefer to sort of take my own way with the character or, or stay true to the Japanese? Yes. Um, it depends on, on the situation. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, because this is a, a pre-existing series, uh, we try to stay true to the Japanese um, without straying too far. And of course, you know, there's on certain shows, there's a little more creative freedom, like on Space Dandy, where right. we, you know, we played it up to a Western audience um, than playing it to the Japanese audience. Um, but we, we try to find a balance. You know, we, we want to make sure that what we choose for the character stays true to the Japanese, but also works with the people that we're trying to sell the product to here in the States. Right. Um, and and it, I guess we've received mixed reviews. You know, there are shows where it's like, there, we did a show that was heavily steeped in uh, Japanese mythology, and we tried to stay very true to the original. And some reviewers said that we, that we were a little too close to the Japanese, and we didn't really explore or go outside of the box. It was a very safe sort of project. Uh, meanwhile, if we go too far out, they're like, oh, uh, you should have stayed too close to the Japanese. It, it's, it's really hard to find that balance, but we try. So if you had to do it all again, knowing what you know now, would you still have chosen voice acting or, or as your career, or would you have chosen something else? <laughs> uh, I, think, I think I would have stuck with voice acting. The weird thing is that voice acting was never really on my... I mean, it's something that I wanted to pursue, but it was never meant to be my career, like my sole source of income. Uh, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, guys, that's it for all my questions. If you have questions that you would like to ask, as you all have been doing already, uh, feel free to ask your questions now. Um, I do know that someone had did get into the live stream and he wasn't able to make it uh, for some reason. It's not letting him back in. Oh. Um, but he wanted to know how was it working with uh, Todd Haberkorn. 
fought Abercorn? Yeah. He's an evil man. He stole my parents. <laughs> we were at a convention together, and he claims to have stole my parents. Like, that is the reason why I got into voice acting. So it is, that is the story I tell people these days when it comes to why I got into voice acting or what do I think about Todd. I'll say he's a, he's a terrible person because he held my parents' ransom, and now I'm paying it off uh, by working for Funimation. <laughs> but he's a good um, guy. He's a good guy. Very talented. Cody twenty nine Natsu wants to know what type of video games do you play? Uh, the ones that are for modern. No, I'm kidding. That's such a stupid answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to play RPGs, I guess. Um, and I don't know. I play a lot of Zelda games, and I'm quite a big fan of Tales. Uh, I just played the last story for the Wii. Because the Wii is being, you know, shuffled off towards the exit, a lot yeah. of games are really cheap now, so I'm like, oh, I can buy all of the games that I, I held off on because I'm, I'm cheap. Um, so I ended up playing that. It's by the makers of Final Fantasy. It was a really good game. Um, yeah. I think those are the games I tend to go towards. RPGs. Um, to be honest, like... Uh, I don't have a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 4, mm -hmm. but I so want to get the new Kingdom Hearts. Interesting. Yeah. I, I only played the first one when it came out for the PS2, and I had a lot of fun, but for some reason I never went back to it. And I feel like I should now. Yeah, they've they with the Kingdom Hearts 2, it advanced dramatically. Ah, uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> I, I, I have, I've never bought a, like a Sony console because they're usually expensive and I don't have time for it but I still want to play like Shadow Colossus because I played it with my oh. friends I loved it and I never I never like currently right now um, my girlfriend wants to buy Disney Infinity sets you know what mm. they're doing yes yeah. and uh, we've been looking at like which new console to get and we're like well if we go for a PS3 she's a big fan of Star Ocean so she can she can play Star Ocean, and I can sneak in, you know, maybe Kingdom Hearts or Shadow Colossus. Right. But at the same time, it's like, that's also being, you know, shown the exit door, and the PS4 is a thing. So we're looking into getting, like, maybe a Wii U for Christmas or something like that. If now, you have any advice on consoles, guys, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> now, and let me ask this. Um, do you and, uh, I can't remember her name, it's bad. I, uh, is it IU? IU, yes. Okay, so, um... Do you and IU work together on making the dating simulation games, or is it just all her? Um, for the most part, uh, my girlfriend, Ayu Sakata, uh, she's the, uh, the head of Sake Visual. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she, she makes the, the visual novels herself. I usually sort of am the, uh, the, I guess, the filler guy. So if she needs to beta test something, or she needs some audio work done, or sound effects, or... Uh, voice acting, her eater. -er. Um, I'll I'll sort of do those sorts of things, but for the most part, like the story, all of that stuff, it's it's her. She may pull from like our experiences or ask me, "What do you think should happen here?" And I'll like offer my two cents, but that's that's all. It really is two cents. Well, I mean, even still, like she's an awesome artist and awesome visual. Because I played uh, Alistar for a little bit. Oh, real Alistar, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. That was a, actually supposed to be a joke. Was it? <laughs> yeah, and everyone was like, it's amazing. And it's like, she was like, well, if my jokes are just that amazing, maybe I should take it seriously and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're currently working on Backstage Pass, which is kind of, I want to say it's, it's like the, the sister project to Realistair. Same, it's pretty much the same, uh, same staff. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, and I think we're really excited about that because this is the first time we've got a uh, cast from like Funimation, pretty much. It's, it's, well, and some people from LA too. Um, so it's a pretty big cast. And uh, we got animation from Japan, from uh, Studio Dean. If you guys are familiar with their work, they did uh, Hakuoki, Hitalia, stuff like that. That's awesome. We animated our opening. Hooray. Uh, Cody29 Natsu says that Kingdom Hearts is worth it. And that's the thing. I'm, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I remember being at least decent at it, but 
come on. I, I, <laughs> I roll. I roll warriors is totally calling to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay, then you you really should know that uh, when I was at AMT, we actually had high roll warriors in our room. I hate you. <laughs> I'd say I don't want to speak to you, but this is an interview, and I have to. But <laughs> <laughs> well, if I would is it, have is it fun? Is it good? Uh, it looked fun. I didn't get a chance to play. What? No. Uh, now I really don't want to talk to you. It was in your grasp, and you didn't play. No, because they wouldn't give it to me. They were just mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, we're going to wave this in your face, you can't really? play. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, fine. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, Southman316, even though he said that he's going to leave in a few minutes, came back and said, what do you think about uh, Naruto Shippuden? I think it's a thing. It is an anime. And it's ending. And it has ended. I, I don't really know much about Naruto, to be honest, so uh, what I think of it is uh, that it exists. <laughs> I, think it's, I guess it's amazing because uh, you know, Naruto is such a, a pillar of the anime and manga industry, and the fact that it's ending is kind of, it's kind of scary for some reason, even though it's clear that you know, the, the industry will continue, it will survive, and uh, the author's going to be working on something else, but it's kind of weird knowing that it's... it's going to be gone you know like yeah as an anime fan it's like you you get into anime and you expect you know things like you know the the pillars of shonen jump to stay forever and then they leave and you're like am i, am I have i been around for that long that they've left that's strange but, well, well what do you think about them and like I, I don't know if you've heard but they're actually planning on making a mini series oh like a spin-off series i guess if you want to call it that but it's still based on naruto that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I'm I'm all for uh, continuing a series and letting it live through ver different variations. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what a, a certain scientific railgun was for for Index, and I loved railgun. So more power to them. Okay, so let me ask you this: Have you seen No Game No Life? Mm, no. Dog on you. Sorry. <laughs> what is it? It is an anime based on uh, a brother and a sister pairing. They are they are neat players. Like they they live and breathe online gaming. Oh, they're neat. I thought you meant like they're yeah. they're kind of neat, as in like. No, they're literally neat. Cool. <laughs> they're literally neat. Oh. Um, <laughs> they live and breathe gaming. They have been known as blank, and they've never been beat. Uh huh. And so, all of a sudden, one day, this god named Tet comes to them and says, how would you like to come and play, you know, for real? And Tet brings them to his world, where everything is based on playing games. So, for example, say that I wanted to challenge you to a game for a cookie. And it's a pretty good cookie, right? Okay, okay. We, you would have to... You would have to, for example, offer something in contribution for that cookie. It couldn't be just for the cookie itself. So, so I'd if, have to add in like something that, that like a cracker. Me. Yeah, like a cracker. Oh, like a cracker. Okay. Like <laughs> a cracker. So if I win, uh -huh. I would get the cookie. Okay. If I lose, I would get the cracker. Ah, uh, okay. And but that's assuming stakes are higher than just cookies and crackers. Yes. And like, so if it is, then I'd watch it anyway because I love food. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's like so many anime references in this anime. Like, nice. Nice. Uh, they've uh, they've put in um, a, like a, I want to say like a scene that's out of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, awesome. <laughs> And that makes Jojo in. That's good. <laughs> yeah, they they they've put in so many different references, and they bleep them all out, like, nice. and it just goes on and on from there. And it's uh, it's an amazing series. Like I, admit, I like it. Show, I like shows that that reference other shows, like especially. I mean, clearly, if it's serious, you you really shouldn't do that. But for comedies, go for it. Oh yeah, but um, and then there's this one chick. Her name's Stephanie Dola. And she gets, like, the short end of the stick with everything. <laughs> nice. And it's it's really, I want to say it's really 
aimed for like the harem peop uh, the harem genre, okay. but it's not. Because there's it's because there's towards them, but it's not for them. For them, yeah. It's it's rather interesting. Nice, that's awesome. <clears throat> And Southman316 says, all right, got to go for reals. See right. ya. Thanks for coming by. So, but guys, no, seriously, if y'all have any questions, so please feel free. As long as they are PG-13-ish. Family friendly. Family friendly. What are you watching right now, aside from, uh... uh I am watching... Uh, how, what? What? <laughs> Is that what it's called? No Game, No Life? No Game, No Life ended! That's why I was gonna say, like, and, and oh, then- Oh, that's why! Okay, I was- I was very confused. Yeah, it was part of the- it was part of the summer anime. Okay, gotcha. And it ended, and how it ended, it was just like- Was it very open-ended? It was- it, it ended in a cliffhanger. Oh, oh. That's how they get you. It was just like Panty and Stocky. That yeah. ended in a cliffhanger. Right. That's and there and and Gainax is not. I honestly think Gainax is just a huge troll company. <laughs> they might be. They might be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've noticed like that is how they ensure that they can get a new season. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, if there's enough interest, people will be like, "Well, we want to see what happens next." But if there is no interest, then we'll the see. Has that. We'll see. And how long has it been since High School of the Dead left? Oh. Uh, in a, a couple of years, right? Yeah, and we've been waiting for all this time for a second season. And I remember once upon a time ago seeing a video with the directors and the creators of High School of the Dead saying that if the fans support it, there will be a season two. Right. The fans have been supporting it all this time, where is season two? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that also comes up to like scheduling and is it, is it profitable to, to get the team back? Mm -hmm. Versus working on something else that might gain more more popularity or be a, a bigger hit. You know, it, it's it's a complicated sort of a thing. Um, oh yeah, and, and then not only that, I was looking at you know how much it costs just to make an anime, mm -hmm. and then it's, it's quite pricey. Yes. Speaking from experience, it's quite pricey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, That's just for, like when we when we ended up uh, negotiating with, with Studio Dean. Hello. <laughs> when we ended up negotiating with Studio Dean, it was like we actually got to see how much it costs per you know mm -hmm. for animation for an for an anime, and it's it's amazing how much it costs and how much like I can't even imagine how they could make that back. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's a huge investment. So uh, and fans support your anime industry, please. And that's why you should buy from Funimation, Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. Official, legal. Offic yeah. So. Um, but no, as of right now, I'm currently watching uh, Wixis Selector Spread. Oh, and is it the, the card game? The, where it's based on Girls' Wishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've been watching that. I watched Selector Infected Wixis. Mm -hmm. That was that's what got me into Wixis Selectors or you know Spread whatever. Right, right, right. And it's just now hypening up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I've also been watching the Chaika series. I was wondering about that. Like, I keep seeing it, and they said it's it's a pretty good show. So, And it, uh, Bones but, is doing it, Studio Bones. So. Mm -hmm. And it's very confusing. It's very confusing? <laughs> to me, it's very confusing, but yet I can't stop watching it. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, <laughs> then I've... watching Rage of Bahamut? I haven't seen that yet. I've been I've been I've been seeing spoilers and I'm like okay I might as well you know at one point just stop and watch it. It's all like so you know how uh, Wixis is it or is it We Cross? I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. I, I have no idea either. I just say what it looks like. It's based on a card game in Japan, mm -hmm. like an actual card game, and mm -hmm. so is Rage of Bahamut. They're both based on card games, and they're, they're both apparently very very good. So I I, I I I have you seen Terror and Resonance yet? Mm -mm. No? Okay. No, wait, 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 wait. Is this? No. Yes. Yes, I have. The one where the, the, with Sphinx. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Japanese name is like Zankyo no Terror or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the same studio as doing Rage of Bahamut. I definitely recommend watching it. Like, the animation is pretty outstanding. I might have to watch it now that you suggested this. It's 
very good. Um, I've also been watching uh, the uh, um, Amagi. I'm probably butchering, butchering how I'm saying this. Amagi Brilliant Park. Oh, is that the one made by the uh, Full Metal Panic creator? I want to say so. Because like, there's that mascot. That yeah. Play. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been how watching. Was that? It's actually pretty funny. Uh, like, a couple, in a few episodes, it's, like, really, really funny. But, like, when I went to A&T, I missed an episode. Oh. So now I'm trying to <laughs> get back. Um, and I can't remember the one name of this one, but it has to do with something with the title that it's in spring. The color in spring. And it's about... Hey, is it that Shoujo series? Uh, yeah, with the girl playing the violin. Violin, Yeah. Yeah. It's in April or something? Yeah. I heard that was really good, too. It is very good. <clears throat> very good. Too many good reviews from what I've seen. Um, but series that... I, and I have to say this. I only cry for three reasons. And one reason that's on the top of everything is that I cry when it comes to, like, you know, those sad endings. Like, for example, Clannad. <laughs> Or air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> you, oh, air. And, and you, you made a, you made a comment when that was playing on my speaker. <laughs> I know it. It totally like I thought you did it on purpose to troll me. I'm like, you need to go. You need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was actually part of a, a a mix. Like after that song, it jumped up to like something <laughs> happy and preppy. Of course it did. It was just like, oh, Micah's here. <laughs> I didn't cry. Well, originally I was going to play an Attack on Titan dubstep remix. <laughs> nice. But instead, you know, you, you play air. Good. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I, I wasn't emotional. <laughs> um, Y'all still should have kissed that Xbox, though. No, we shouldn't have. <laughs> and I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> Or you could have done a little handprint thing that makes it look like a lip. I, I suggested it, but I also didn't want red Sharpie all over my hand. She had lipstick. She was handing you guys lipstick oh, yeah. to do well, that. She was giving it to put it on my lips. I was like, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> I'm fine without it. Thank you very much. Although if you have chapstick, I could use it. Are there any other questions? I don't know. Uh, guys, if y'all have any other questions, I mean, there's... Well, Anime Dancer is in there twice. Um, Cody Natsu and then Rune Walsh. She's watching you. I know. I mean, we're it, it's just now two. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like it's been two, like an hour. Like it seriously doesn't. Good. That's good. That means we're having fun. Exactly. Then time or, flies or, when you have fun. Or time just flies as you get older. And then you die. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, you, you got the chance to hang out with Clifford a lot during a and uh, Chance is a strong word. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, so I've heard, uh, I've heard from other people that I've interviewed that he is a con crasher. Would you agree with that? A con crasher? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope he's listening to this, and if not, good. Even better. <laughs> well, like... Uh, we crashed a convention once, and uh, just because it was, it was, it was mini-Acon, you know? And that's mm -hmm. like free-for-all anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say he's a contractor. Mm -hmm. He gets invited to conventions and rightfully goes to them. Uh huh. Actually, no. You know what? No, he's a con crasher, and 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 he'll <laughs> take your money. He'll put you in a locker. <laughs> well, see, here's here's the reason why I say that because I went to I, I interviewed Natalie Hoover, right? Uh huh. And he showed up <laughs> in the interview, and she's like, "No, this is my interview." <laughs> showed up during the interview. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> He's like, okay, fine. Oh, the Kanye West of voice actors. So this is like, margin. Like, I'm gonna let you finish. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, guys, I know that y'all are trickling in a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions and it's not, it's saying, oh, hey, you have to sign up. You don't. Um, you just hit the nickname thing and then make up whatever kind of nickname you want. And just go ahead and ask your question. Or tweet them. Or tweet them. However, I don't I don't have my tweeter open. Okay, tweet them to me. Or you can tweet them to him. And <clears throat> And I will probably forget to check my Twitter and uh, ignore you. Italian! Welcome. Italian Is it Italian or Italian? I'm I'm guessing it's Italian or it's Italian. Then that's that's one of my friends. Do not cause trouble. <laughs> They're saying you're so famous. <laughs> They're like, OMG, Micah is so famous. I will I will kill you. I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I know your family. <laughs> And I think they left. Good. Nope, they're still here. Terrible. <laughs> so, um, okay, here's here's a, a hard one, and I've asked this a couple of times, and it's it's always it varies per person. Um, how do you feel when the community that is pro sub? interacts with a community that is pro-dub, and they have arguments with each other about it? Like... Um, it depends on who starts the argument. Well, no, like, I mean, there's a, a, a huge hatred in the sub-community for dubs, because I they feel... Oh, yeah, I am well aware of that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, what, that, that's what the question is, is, like, what do you feel... What that, are my, my feelings towards sub-fans? Yeah. If they want to watch subtitled versions that's that's fine as long as they support the anime industry as a whole that's fine you know if they insist on buying imports whether it's buying from the states and only watching the subs or buying imports from japan legally and watching it you know just without subtitles straight on japanese translation that's fine as long as they're supporting the industry that's all i care about they don't have to watch dubs dubs are just an option so we can sell them in the states and make it more accessible for people who don't want to read their anime or whatever it may be their movies so, right. As long, I mean, they can coexist. You know, Marvel and DC, you can like both, kind of thing. Oh, speaking of Marvel, what do you, what do you think about the Attack on Titan crossover? I, I heard it wasn't exciting as it could have been. Like it was like actually a short like. Scene. Yes, it was. And nothing really happened. It was just like, hey, there's a Titan, and hey, look, there's. There's Spider-Man, and then other Marvel characters. Mm -hmm. And, like, it didn't conclude? No. <laughs> was it Was it at least cool, though, to see them, like, in the same place? Like, I don't, I have no idea what, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it, it was more like, uh, it was more or less like, I mean, you had the armored titan, you had the armored titan, you had the colossal titan, you had, um, the female titan, mm -hmm. which we all know that they're people, Right, right. And Aaron's Titan form, I think, was in there. Okay. How how they got there, though? That's the question. Yeah. And, and why are they in their forms? Yeah. yeah, and why are they not in human form? Like, I would like to see one where, like, the they just tackle, like, it, the main cast of Attack on Titan tackles, like, Normal, random titans, but with the Marvel crew, like they team up. Yeah, that 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 would be, that would be a good deal, mm -hmm. but that didn't happen. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But hey, <laughs> maybe if there's enough interest, there'll be like a, a spinoff or more. M maybe. Hopefully, I guess if fans like that sort of thing. I know a lot of fans are like, oh. Why are there comics in my anime? And then comic fans are like, ah. Oh, Why are there comics? Or, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just sitting here looking out my window, and it was just raining not even a minute ago, and now it stopped. It's pretty gloomy where I am. 
So, um, Funimations, that's in Fort Worth, isn't it? It's in the Dallas area. It's in the Dallas area? So you're like, are you more north or are you more south? Or west or east? You're in Dallas? Do you ever go watch Austin Tyndall's plays? No, I have not. I have not been to anyone's performances, which is a shame because I really want to. In fact, um, you got. Do you know who Stephanie? Ah, uh, uh, Stephanie Bram. Stephanie Young. Stephanie Young. I think I do. Didn't she do a voice for Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah, she was Armstrong's a daughter. Sister. Sister. The. The uh, Olivia. Olivia, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I I think I met her at my first mini Acon. She was at mini Acon with her husband. Yeah, they yeah. they have a band, um, a really cool like jazz bossa sort of lounge band, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to see them perform like in their full band. I've only seen them perform at conventions when it's just the two of them, but I, I've been meaning to go out there. So if you if you like like really cool chill music, check out their music. It's really awesome. Now. Um... <clears throat> Have you, uh, now, I, I heard from Clifford that you yeah. ran into him at a Walmart, but do you, time. <laughs> uh, the time where there was a Spider-Man and it sounded just like him. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you run into any other voice actors in the public space? Um, I've run into to a few. Uh, I ran into Chris Kaysen once when we were shopping uh, before he moved to L.A., um, so that was kind of sad in a way. It was like, oh, you're, this is the last time I'm going to see you in a while. Oh, um, and then I ran into, I ran into Jade a couple of times. Jade Saxton mm -hmm. um, at the Ren Fair. She was like all dressed up and like a, like someone from the time period, and, and I was like, oh, I barely recognize you. And we bumped into each other. Like since then, I, when I go to the Ren Fair, I'm always like, is that Jade? Is that Jade? <laughs> but, uh, Really, the person I, I run into the most is Cliff. Like, we will be shopping, and I'll just turn to the next aisle, and there he is. I'm like, good grief. <laughs> uh, Anime Dancer 77 says it's Olivia, not Olivia. Oh, yes. Whoever that lady is, I'm sorry. I, I know very little about like the, the Brotherhood story and the characters, the new characters that show up. No, very little about that. Okay, if you had a choice to cosplay any character that's out there, who would you cosplay as? Uh, cosplay is not really my thing. Um, but if you, I, but if you had the choice, if I had the choice. Maybe, maybe live action Kenshin. Uh, but. Or, you know what, uh, my character from Good Luck Girl, because he looks surprisingly like me. He's got long black bangs and a ponytail, and he just wears his turtle suit. So. Um, yeah. Italian said, yeah, gosh, because of the Olivier. And then when I asked you that question, he'd pick Soul. Uh, Italian can shut up. <laughs> And, um, I'm not going to promote his music anymore. Oh. Oh, snap. <laughs> Actually, that's terrible because I'm saying that to a rapper, so I should not do that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, okay. How was it like working on Codebreaker? Oh, geez, Codebreaker. Uh, that was terrifying for me because I was a fan of the, the manga. Mm-hmm. I read that when it came out in the States years ago. And so uh, when the auditions came up, I was like, I remember really liking that. And so I, I read it again. I was like, yeah, I really like this, and I want to be a part of it. And then I realized that if I got cast as any of the characters, I'd have to do them justice. And then um, I found out I'll be playing, I was playing Ray, and that sort of freaked me out. Like, oh, great, no pressure or anything. I have my own standards to live up to. Um, but overall, I love, like, those kinds of shows, those are the kinds of, uh, like, action, like, I love, I love shows that have, like, a bunch of people with superpowers. Um, right. I really dug, like, Get Backers back in the day. So, oh, yeah. Um, Codebreaker for me was kind of like doing that, except with teenagers. Um, 
and it was it was a lot of fun. Being being a, a cool dude is always fun because I don't get to be a cool dude in real life. <laughs> if you if you could be if you could have any Pokemon, what would you have? Any Pokemon. Oh. If um, if you're a Pokemon fan, of course. Oh yeah, I'm totally a Pokemon. Pokemon fan. Like, I, I just started getting back into it. I stopped after Ruby and Sapphire. I mm -hmm. uh, didn't play uh, was it Diamond and Pearl. Or, or and... I have no idea. There's I, so many now. There are. But I ended up playing uh, X. Pokemon X. Or Pokemon Y? Pokemon Y. Uh, and I loved it. It got me back into Pokemon. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting the, the newest one. Um, but, like, as a trainer or, like, as a pet or, like, in real or, life? Or just in general, like, if we had Pokemon in life, and you were to capture it and go to gyms and whatever, or if you were to have it as a pet, what Pokemon would you want? Um, I would like to have Lugia, because he's awesome. And I wouldn't have to, to pay for airfare. <laughs> I would be like, Lugia, use fly, take me to... This Never. place. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Cody twenty nine not two wants to know what about a blast rate yet the blast ret gear? What? I have no idea. It's B L A S S R E I T E R. Oh, blast Rider. Thank you. Blast Rider. That was what what about Blast Rider? They they want to know what about Blast Rider. Um That was my first supporting the, the show that I had my first supporting character in, um, and it was it was weird. I didn't expect to get cast because uh, during the auditions, the the audition side said, you know, could go to male or female. Mm -hmm. um, and the director said, I'm probably going to cast a female for this, which I don't know what that says about me. Um, but I ended up getting the part, and uh, it was probably the most emotional role that I've done. Um, which is scary because that was also my first. So, um, but yeah, it was it was crazy. I learned a lot about like voice acting, acting, working with Tyler, uh, who was the director, Tyler Walker, mm -hmm. uh, the director for Fairy Tale. Um, that it was a, a huge learning experience, and I think if it weren't for that part, I wouldn't have uh, received any of the other parts that I have now. Okay, so I'm assuming that. Um the part of fairy tale that y'all just finished, uh, or have y'all finished it? The second part where Midnight comes back. Oh yes, yes. Are you hoping that Midnight makes a third return so you continue working with the crew you know, of fairy tale? I've heard from fans that that story, that storyline where Midnight shows up for a second time, is actually an anime-specific storyline. It is mm. a filler arc. It um, is. So that doesn't happen in the manga, and he does actually return later on. With the rest of the Arashion says. So I'm hoping they, they somehow like hand wave or explain what that was versus what this midnight is. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to reprise him. Like he's he's I think he's the only villain I've played so far, but I had a blast, especially because he has the same he has the same say you as soul. Right. So I thought that was a, a really neat uh, I guess throwback or something, whatever that is. Okay, let me ask this now. Um, and Wolf Children. Yes. That is a very hardcore, emotion-filling movie. Very much so. Did you cry? Did I cry working on it, or did I cry... All of the above. All of the above? Uh, <laughs> I, I did, unfortunately, I did not cry. Uh, I got very emotional during it, though. Like, I, I started... Uh, feeling very upset and, and kind of like heartbroken, you know, kind of mm -hmm. depressed afterwards, uh, especially in that last scene with Ame and, and uh, his mom. Um, and then during, watching it, uh, I once again, I didn't cry, but I did get emotional. It did get emotions out of me. Um, and I think one of the coolest things is we did a lot of live screenings mm -hmm. where we would be there as guests and uh, we'd watch it along with all the, a lot of people, you know, uh, anime fans, they bring their family, and ultimately, at the end, the parents were the ones who were hit the hardest with that story, you know? Um, in fact, my, my mom loves it. She's, she's watched it more times than I have. 
uh, which isn't saying much, but she's watched it a lot. She bought like six copies. Six? Well, she kept buying one and then lending it out, and then the person they lent it out to would like it so much that, that my mom would say, just keep it. And so she'd buy another copy and then lend it out, and then buy another copy and lend it out. And it ended up being one of those things where it's like, you don't have, I appreciate you supporting the industry, but just ask me for a copy. <laughs> Stop giving it away to people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they can buy their own. They can buy their own things, but yeah, she. Uh, Wolf Children was a special thing, I, especially uh, just because of the emotional resonance it had with other people. You know, I could see how much it affected them and how much they loved it. So, while I wasn't able to necessarily cry and watching it, it was really cool seeing other people cry. That's the worst way to put it, but that's exactly what it is. <laughs> have you have you had somebody come through in your autograph line? with uh, Ame's little wolf plushie that the mother had made. I think that happened once at Otakon when we premiered it. I think that happened. I might be making it up. Cause I'd love to sign it. Like, if that next time that happens, I would love to like take a picture with it and be like, hey, it's, my, it's me. <laughs> like, I've seen it on, on Amazon, and I want to get it so bad. <laughs> right? I mean, maybe I'll commission someone to do that. That would be cool. Um, speaking of commissions, you I draw. Do. Yes, I do. And you draw commissions. Indeed how, how, if any of our listeners or myself want to get a commission from you, what do they do? Um, I have a DeviantArt account, and I usually post journals uh, whenever <gasps> I uh, am taking commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm planning on doing some more. Uh, maybe, maybe for Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe for Black Friday. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's topical, right? Um, but yeah, follow me at my ocean eyes, M A I, and then ocean eyes uh, on DeviantArt. And uh, if you follow me, then you can keep up to date with my commission status. I have to say this because I have a DeviantArt as well, and I say it to myself. But that's so hipster. That's so hipster. I mean, <laughs> really? I thought hipster was like posting your artwork only on Instagram. Or, uh, uh, I don't use DeviantArt. I only use like my Facebook fan page because uh, DeviantArt. <laughs> So overrated. It's just filled with like nothing but porn and like, <laughs> which is that not like that's false. But... Or or don't forget Tumblr. Oh God, <laughs> Tumblr's hipster. I can't even figure that out. Like I, I'll start being on Tumblr and like I'm gonna post my artwork. Click. This is much more complicated than it needs to be, and I'm way way too uh, old for this. You're not old. I'm not old at all, but I, it's it's beyond me. I'm like, this is not my... I remember when we only had MySpace. Uh, I remember when LiveJournal was a thing. I I, I, I I remember that. Man, MySpace, like, do you remember when, peop when people took selfies? People would say, like, we're taking a My MySpace photo and not a selfie. That selfie didn't exist until recently. Yeah, I remember that. Jeez. Do you remember how we were able to customize our own profiles for MySpace? I remember hating that because everyone would choose like the most obnoxious glittery thing that would like take forever <laughs> to load, right? <laughs> right. And then they'd have like the autoplay on their site that would just like play their music, but because it's taking forever to load, it would be like the choppiest thing. So the song would take forever and play like every two seconds, and you're just like, gosh, I unfriend you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you in real life. It doesn't matter. Uh, Animated Answer 77 says she's laughing because she has a DA for cosplay. It's okay. I have a D DA for art. <laughs> I still use DeviantArt as much as, like, what I used to do is, like, I used to like to find, like, a, like really good artists who didn't have, like, many page views and, like, sort of support them. And, right. Like, get, like, you know, more attention. But these days it's so difficult because... Like, I've never seen so much stolen artwork and tracing and, like, bases and stuff like that, where I'm like, where's the actual artwork? Uh, yeah, hashtag art snob. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it's um, have you ever been on Gaia Online? No, I have not. You My have friends, not? No, I have not. I'm, I'm not uh, hip and You're... in. Oh, trust me, you, 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 now you don't want to be a part of Gaia Online. Sadly, <laughs> it's it's full of like eight and eleven year olds. Man, <laughs> I remember when the internet had rules. You had to take classes on how to use the internet. Closet <laughs> therapist said the actual artwork is on Tumblr. Everyone jump ship. Closet therapist, hi. 
Hi. She cosplayed as uh, my, one of my characters from my webcomic. Oh, she did? Yeah. Was that the one picture that you and I you were there and then yes. did the... That was oh, that's... She says hi. Hi. Yeah, she's <laughs> awesome. That was an awesome uh, cosplay. I, I have to say that. It, mm -hmm. You you are an awesome cosplayer person. <laughs> Shout out. Um. So Red Data Girl. Yes. How how serious is serious for that serious role that you had to play to being serious? Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um. It it was fairly serious for me. I mean, because it, it played out like a drama, you know? Like, it reminded me of actually doing stage because of how, uh, like, it, it required a lot of natural acting instead of, like, over-the-top, goofy, bulging eyeballs, sweat drops, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in the finale, uh, I got really, really emotional, very close to, to tears because I just felt so, so invested in my character. Um, and I'd love to work on a show like that again. Okay, um... Oh, 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 oh. Have you ever seen the one series? And one I can't, series. The, the one. one... The one series, and it's based kind of on Shakespeare's Tempest? Oh, uh, Blast of, Temp Blast of Tempest? Yes! I wanted to. Um, that was also animated by Bones. Uh-huh. The artist... Who, who worked on it is phenomenal. Like I, his sketches are amazing. He he worked on what was it? Sort of the sort of the stranger. I think so. A, a samurai film that Bones did with mm -hmm. uh, the designer of the character designer of Soul Eater and Fullmetal Alchemist. They collabed on that, and I I really wanted to check it out. But my friends have told me, well, it's Shakespeare. So if you like that, <laughs> like, oh. it's not all based on Shakespeare though. That's right. just the thing. Like it's anime. It's no, anime, it's but it, okay. For example, it's kind of, it's kind of, and I'm putting air quotations around that, like Romeo times Juliet. Oh, okay. It's kind of like that, except they it it's taken place so far in advance, like where you can, okay, you remember how Lost was, where they would bounce from place to place, 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 and you didn't know what was going on until the end. Okay, it's kind of like that with Shakespeare added. Interesting. I mean, and I've, I've seen that it's gotten good reviews. It so. is. It is very, very good. Is it on Crunchyroll? I believe it is. I'll check it out. I mean, I really love the art style, and uh, and to me, animation is very important. Like, okay. I'll take that over a, a very bland story. If it's terrible, I won't watch it. But see, here here's the problem with me. I've been told I need to watch *Elf and Lied*. But to me, the the, the animation style is. Eh. It, it depends on what you like. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that to to everybody. Yeah. I like things like Higurat or what's it called? Uh, when they cry. Yeah. Uh, or um, I don't know. I wouldn't even say Death Note or um, you know, the, a little more gory, intense. Show Another. Style. Another. Oh. Yeah, another. I, I, <laughs> I was like, it's not. Well, there is that one scene, isn't there? Uh, and, and then there's the other scene with the boat. Oh, from um, another. Another, yeah. And then there's yeah. the scene with the umbrella. The umbrella, the infamous umbrella scene, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you like that kind of stuff, yeah, I'd recommend it to you. But I mean, it's uh, it's a thing. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. So feel feel, feel free to correct me. Uh, your mums, uh, the one character that you played. It's kind of like a mafia kind of thing. What? Ah! Uh, now you're gonna make me look it up. I thought you, I thought you just said your mom. I'm like, <laughs> that that was a twist. No, hold that on. Are the anime twist? No, ha 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 you're so funny. I'm not really, I get paid to talk. Stupid advertisements. There we go. Uh. Oh, Yarmin gone? Thank you! 
Thank you! I was about to look it up, too. I was like, wait a second, Mafia and the thing that, that's hard to pronounce. Exactly. Thank yes. you! That. <laughs> yes. Uh, how was it working on a series like that? It was... Once again, uh, the, the recording process, like, recording for it was, was really cool. Uh, I really like my character Jonah in that, but the recording process is weird because they didn't hold auditions for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got a call from our director, Chris Bevins, and he was like, uh, would you be okay playing with this, or playing this character? And I said, sure. Uh, we recorded the first season because apparently they wanted it out really fast. Mm -hmm. um, and then we didn't work on the rest for a couple of months. And then we came back to season two, and they were like, oh yeah, I guess we need to work on this really fast too. So we did it, and um, yeah, it was it was kind of, it was a, a bit more fast paced than I, I'm used to, but it was a cool story. And the finale uh, of season two was, was really intense uh, between uh, Coco and Jonah and their little feuds there. Okay, tell me about Setsu and Birdie Decode. Oh, Birdie the Mighty Decode. Yes. Um, that, was, that was one of my earlier, I think, probably the show I worked on after Soul Eater. Um, and it was it was a great show, a very uh, classic sort of feel to it, um, because it's based on a, an OVA from I guess the early '90s, maybe late '80s, um, and I loved it. It's if I could go back and like redo that character to just do the show justice, I would I would do it in a heartbeat. I love that show very much. Okay, how was it like working on these specials for Black Butler as uh, Thomas Wallace? Depressing. <laughs> depressing? <laughs> Very depressing. Because uh, I love, I really like my character. Um, it, it just, he, he met an unfortunate end. Uh, to the point, it, 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 it frustrates me to the point that every time I see a Grell cosplayer, I just sort of like shake my fist at them and they don't understand why. And I don't tell them why. <laughs> I'm just, they're just like, wow, Micah Solo saw the jerk. Um, but yeah. Uh, it was sad. It was really sad. For a while, I played a lot of characters that just died. And died horrible deaths, too. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm... He died twice. True. He died in the first episode and then died in the last episode of the first season. Mm -hmm. um, I'm right now just going through your My Anime list. Profile. I can tell. I can That's, tell. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is it like working on Appleseed? Um, confusing. Confusing? Uh, because originally the part went to, I think it was dubbed in two studios. It was done once in LA, and I don't know how that worked, and then it was dubbed at ADV, and Chris Patton played the character I played. Um, so I was sort of, I came in sort of in this last, I don't know when this story takes place, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. it comes place after like the rest of Appleseed. So I don't know, I didn't know anything about the previous series or anyone else's role, uh, how they play the character. I just sort of played it like myself. And, uh, and Colleen, who is the director, didn't realize that it was such a small part. Mm. Uh, I think overall he had maybe about 20 lines in the show. Uh, and she, she was very surprised when we came to our last cue. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, that's it for you. I'm like, cool, thanks for calling me in. <laughs> I got paid at least. <laughs> closet 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 therapist said you play twins and dead people. I do. I do play twins and dead people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's surprising how often that happens. <laughs> In fact, if you were to make like a, a meme of like all of the characters who have died that I played for a while, it was like half and half. Like the characters that I, who have died were the same the characters that I've lived as far as the characters I've voiced. Um, so, it is 2.30 now. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you've got you've got errands to run, and I don't want to keep your time up anymore, but guys, this, this is the last call for any questions. If you have a question, please say so now, or forever hold your pieces. Ever rest in peace. For like and justice for all. <laughs> the end. 
and this part I'll edit out, but um, I do need to talk to you a little bit after we're done here. Cool. Just, you know, like my NDA to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. <clears throat> Last call for questions. Anybody. Anybody. If you were typing, please, you know, just be like dot, 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 and then we'll, we'll, we'll know that you're typing your question. Otherwise, at 2.40, I will have to close this out. So that gives you guys five minutes. Yeah, we'll give it five more minutes. And uh, if you don't make it, then feel free to tweet me your questions, and I'll... Anime Dancer 77 wants you to say a bunch of soul stuff. Why? <laughs> Is that what the DVDs are for? I, I, I guess. I don't know. She says because... Because it's not, I mean, ask any parent, because it's not a, a viable answer. <laughs> like, you, in fact, it could be better because I'd be in character in the DVDs versus now where I have to remember what I did. And she says, please. <laughs> but then you have a question. Uh, Rune Walsh wants to know if you were trapped on a desert island with two characters that you voiced, who would they be? Uh, if I was trapped on a, a deserted island with two of my characters. <sighs> Do we have internet? Uh, that is. <laughs> that's the main. I mean, that's what I'm concerned about. No, um, let's see. Uh,. I would probably, oh my god. <laughs> well, I would say your character from Codebreakers, because he can make fire. That would and keep this you... This is true, but, you know, he's kind of <laughs> nuts, you know? And has issues. He has personal issues. I, I don't know if I want to deal with that. He's, he's very angsty, you know what I mean? And um, then... And then you have B, who wants to... You know what, I, I think I would go with B as one of them, because <laughs> I have no stake in the dandy race, you know? <laughs> I have nothing to do with that, so he has nothing against me. And he's very useful, he's very handy. Uh, I think I would, I would have B as one of them from Space Dandy. And, but uh, he betrayed not only the Gogo -Go Empire, but he also in betrayed the other empire. Yeah, but am I the, am I the the Gogol Empire or the other empire? No, I'm me. So he won't betray me. <laughs> Besides, we have a kinship. We sound so similar. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably pick B, and maybe I think I'd go with Mizuki from Kamisama Kiss, just because he's a fun guy, and I'm sure we'd have good things to talk about. And we also sound very similar. <laughs> um. And, and to the person who asked if I can do a solo line, I'll do it when we finish all of this. So stick around. So. That, that was kind of more threatening than I wanted it to be. <laughs> oh, I remember. Okay, so the two girls that were behind me that held their phones out to you, and they're like, I'm going to make this my ringtone, and they just squealed. Yes. <laughs> I actually know both of them, and that was kind of embarrassing. I'm very sorry. <laughs> On behalf of them, I apologize. Oh, don't worry about it. It was funny at the same time. I just like died laughing when we laughed <laughs> when we left out of there. I was like, oh my god. It's okay. It's not the weirdest thing that's happened at a convention. It's it's fairly commonplace. What was the, okay? Oh, I, I've asked this once, and I've been afraid to ask this again. What yeah. is the most uncommon, weirdest thing that you have ever had to autograph? That I had to autograph? Uh huh. Uh. And someone uh, and the person that I had asked this was their shoe. Someone's shoe. No, I've I've, I've signed a bit of shoes, like a fair bit of shoes. That's so weird, like that that it's not weird anymore. You know what? Uh. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna say it was a jar of pickles. A jar of pickles. <laughs> yes. Someone above, was like... Above someone... body parts, above shoes, above uh, clothing. It was a jar of pickles. Just just so just know, anybody that's in this 
live stream right now, if they bring you a jar of pickles, this is going to be like an inside thing. You will understand. Like, and <laughs> that means that you'll know. I, if, you get, if you give me a jar of pickles and ask me to sign it, um, or if you just give me a jar of pickles in general, um, I will know that you know. You must have been listening to this stream. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was definitely the weirdest thing that I've signed. <clears throat> Alright guys, it is 2.40, so if you want me to do all the, the soul stuff that you want to do, please feel free, otherwise... Are you guys ready, or are you ready? I'm you? ready. Not you, I'm not asking you, I'm asking the person who asked. I, I don't know if she I, is... No, you, you just work here. I, I, just, I, I just work here, I, you know, <laughs> I, I own the page. It's, it's not about you. Uh, she says ready with multiple exclamation points. Good, because I'm not. Um, <laughs> uh, and now, your soul is mine. Ta-da! Hooray! Thanks for listening, guys. Yay! Um, and on a side note, um, guys, we try and do this as much as we can on Anime Twist. It's, you know, it is... It takes time out of the, the voice actor's day, as well as um, the comic book artist or the, the cosplayers. So if you would, um, Micah, if there's any way that they could follow you or anything, would you like to state that now? Uh, sure. Um, in general, you can find me at My Ocean Eyes, like I said, on DeviantArt, uh, M-A-I Ocean Eyes, um, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, DeviantArt, and then on Facebook, um, just type in Micah Solisad and uh, add me on my personal page, not the fan page, because the fan page doesn't get updated as frequently. So, uh, yeah, that. And that just goes that y'all can support him because for this, and hopefully we can do this again sometime in the future. Yes, most definitely. And hopefully it'll be a time where we have a lot of, it's not in the middle of the day and a lot of more people will show up. Hey, you know, maybe next time I can get you to read some fan fiction. Uh, or maybe there will not be a next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. Um, hold on there, and I will see you guys later. Bye. So let's.